In this lecture, we will discuss the advanced mates, path mate, and linear to linear ratio coupler. Path mate allows us to make a point in a part to follow a specific movement which follows a set path. Linear to linear coupler ratio movement allows us to link movements of different parts using a linear relation or a ratio. To illustrate those two mates, we will utilize them to complete the following assembly. You can download this drawing and the assembly parts from the download section linked to this lecture. So let's get started. Most of the mates required for this assembly are already set for us. However, we are required to set up two additional mates. The first is to make this red ring moves along this yellow path. To set up this movement, we will use the relation path mate. So we'll go to mates, advanced mates, and select path mate. Under mate selection here, we have two fields to fill. The first field asks us to select a point to base our movement on. And this is a point in the movable part. In this case, it's on the red ring we have. So in this assembly, we would like to have the center of this ring moves along the path. So for this vertex selection, we will select the center of this ring hole. So let's go ahead and look for that. So I'll expand this design tree on the side, and then I will go to the ring which is the last part. And here we notice that the origin of that part is actually at the center of the ring. And this is something I actually had in mind when I designed this model as part of my design intent. So I'll go ahead and select the origin. In different cases, this selection could be different than the origin. It could be any vertex in the model. The second selection ask us to select a path and this will guide the movement of the ring. So for the path it's this yellow tube I have. So I'll go ahead and look for the path I used to create this tube. So I'll look for the part first. So it's this part, the second part, expand it and then I have a sweep feature which I use to create this tube. So I'll expand this feature and then I look for the sketch for the path and in this case it is sketch 3. So I'll right click here and show it. And now you can see the path goes through the center of the yellow tube. So I'll go ahead and select that. Now I've already got my two selections and you notice the ring has actually moved to position itself in the middle of the tube. Now if I finish my selection like this and I click OK, I can test the mate by moving the red ring and you will notice the center of the ring will always keep at the center of the tube when I move it. I don't really need to have the path visible so I'll go ahead and hide it just to make things a bit more attractive. Now I'll go back to this mate I just created to investigate the other features or constraints we have with it. So I'll go to the mates in the design tree and then I have path mate, the last one I created. I'll go ahead and edit the feature. Under the mate itself, we have three additional options for path constraints, pitch control and roll control. Let's take a look at each of those. The path constraint basically constrains the movement of the ring along the path. So our current selection is free and because of that, I was able to move the ring along the path. If I expand this option, I'll have two other options, distant and percentage. So let's check out distant for now. So now it's zero inches. Let me go ahead and make that into four inches. And when I do that, the ring will move four inches along the path and it will not move further or less than those four inches. So if I click OK for this mate, I cannot move the ring anymore along the path 
it is set to 4 inches. However, the ring does rotate around the path. Let's go back to the mate. The other path constraint I have is percent along path. And this is quite similar to distant. However, in this case, we are specifying a percentage. So if I go ahead and write 50, the ring will station itself 50% of that path and it will not move either directions. So this is for path constraint. I'll go ahead and select free since so this is most appropriate to us. And now we'll start looking at the pitch control. Other than free, we have the option follow path. And this option pretty much has to do with the orientation of the ring. So if I select X axis, the ring will be oriented toward that axis. If I select Y, it will be oriented along the Y and Z will be oriented around the Z. And then I also have a flip option to flip the ring. Just keep in mind that those X, Y and Z are in relation to the path itself and not to the origin of the assembly as we have it in the corner of the screen. So if I click OK for this and then check out the movement, you will notice that the orientation of the ring is actually set in some way. In this case, the face of the ring is always perpendicular to the path it follows. Now let's check out the other constraint. And this is the roll control. And this again has to do with the orientation of the ring as it moves along the path. And in this option, it does ask us to select an edge to use it as a base vector. So I'll go ahead and select this edge of the main body. And then I can check out the movements of X, Y, and Z. So if I keep it at Z and then click OK and move the ring, you will notice that the ring is always facing the Z axis wherever it moves. So let me go back again to mate and set them all to free. Now you can use more than one of those constraints together. However, you have to be careful doing this because many times you will over constrain the ring and it will basically be set in a certain position without any movement. However, if that's part of your design intent, then go ahead with it. Now I'll leave them all to free and then click OK. So now my ring moves freely along the path. The other thing we need to do is to set up the movement of the two cylinders we have. So let me show you those. We have this inner cylinder and then we have another outer cylinder. So as it stands now, those two cylinders move independently from each other. However, we want to link them together in such a way that the movement of the inner cylinder is always three times as much as the movement in the outer cylinder. And to do this, we will use the advanced mate linear to linear coupler. To do that, I'll go to mates, advanced mates, and select linear coupler. And when I select this option, I will have multiple fields to fill. And we're going to go ahead and go through them. The first field asks us to select our first body in which we want to move. So I will select this inner cylinder. Second option I have is to select the other part in which it will move with the first part in a certain relation. So I will select the green part, the outer cylinder. And there are two fields that I've left empty and those have to do with movement references. At this stage, we will always leave them empty. And if we leave them empty, the movement will be referenced to the origin of the assembly, which will work very good for most of our purposes. And then at the bottom, I have 
the ratio. And this is the movement ratio. So now it's set up to one to one ratio, meaning if one part move for one inch, the other part will move for one inch as well. So let's go ahead and test this. So if I click OK and start moving the inner cylinder, you will notice the outer cylinder moves along with it at a ratio of one to one, meaning they have the same movement. Let's go and change this. So I'll go back to my mate. And then, as in the drawing, we have the relation as one to three. Or when the blue part, the inside part, moves for three inches, the inner part moves for only one inch. So to do this, I'll go ahead and change the first number to three. This first number refers to the blue cylinder I have. So if I click OK to this, and then I move the blue cylinder, you will notice that the green cylinder moves with it as well. However, the movements are not the same. And the blue cylinder moves much more than the green one. Or to be more accurate, it moves to a ratio of 3 to 1. Now one thing to notice here and keep in mind is that the movement will be set to the original position we have. So now we've set the relation. I cannot move the green cylinder all the way inside because it was not the case when we started. So a good way to deal with this relation is to set your components in the location you want them before you start applying it. So I'll go ahead and do a small trick here. I will suppress that relation and then I will move my cylinders to their original positions all the way inside. And now I will unsuppress it and check it again. Now the movements still 3 to 1 ratio. However, my cylinders go back all the way to the end. This concludes this tutorial on the advanced mates path mate and linear to linear coupler. So while you're here, you can go ahead and experiment a bit with those mates.